G'day, how you going? Welcome to my channel, Bootlosophy. And if you're new here, my name is Tech, coming to you from Wajik country in Western Australia, Noongaburja, and I recognize the traditional custodians. Today, I'm announcing and showing off my collab boot with Bandung Artisan Bootmakers Fortis Boots. <laughs> So this is the Fortis Boots Bootlosophy collaboration boot that we're calling the Strider. I'm a fan of the Tolkien trilogy, Lord of the Rings, and if you are, you recognize the reference to Strider as Aragorn's name when he was a ranger in the north. I decided on the name the Strider, not only because of Lord of the Rings, but also because I uh, designed an upland style walking boot hearkening back to the uh, American heritage styles of upland hunting boots. Let me describe the design and construction and then uh, keep watching to the end. I'll tell you how you can order this in two slightly different styles. Or if you're dying to order, you can go to the contents list below in the description and skip straight to how to contact Fortis and order section. As you can see, it's a taller eight inch plain toe boot with a uh, roomy round toe box built on a wedge sole. That should make it an extremely supportive and comfortable boot to go out walking, hiking, and I think a comfortable outdoor work boot. If you subscribe to my channel, and if not, why not? <laughs> subscribe now. Heck, click on the like button as well, why don't you? <laughs> if you have been following my channel, you know that I've recently put my toe into Indonesian boot scenes or more specifically, Bandung Indonesian boot scene, and got a pair of rough out Santalum service boots before I discovered the new boot maker, Sunny Ramdani, who started Fortis Boots in 2020, just before the pandemic hit. I recently reviewed his Dakar lasted round toe service boot, which I found so comfortable and well made, and at such a great price, that I got the idea of designing a collab boot with Sunny. My idea of a boot that I wanted to collaborate on was an upland style uh, like the ones made by Whites and Nicks and Truman, at least those that I know of. I just like the outdoorsy tall look and the use of a wedge sole struck me as being totally comfortable indoors or outdoors and would work for me in the uh, regular walks and hikes that my wife and I like to do in the bush in our national parks around here. Uh, but those Pacific Northwest boots, they're a bit beyond my price range when new, around 520 to uh, 670, nearly 700 US dollars. And with the recent exchange rate changes, they land here in Australia at well over a thousand Aussie bucks. These are 290 US dollars plus postage. So for under $300, an amazing bargain considering it's not short of good materials or in quality construction. Agreed, those PNW boots have amazing build quality, uh, but even compared against other boots at the under 300 US dollar range, what would you get? Everything other than Thursdays have moved over that $300 mark since COVID, and they're not handmade. But this isn't a review. I mean, after all, as objective as I promise to remain, I mean, I designed this boot, so I can't say that I'm totally disinterested, right? So what I'll do in this video is uh, to just show you the facts and I'll let you review those facts for yourself. But first, let's get a few disclaimers out of the way. I did pay for these boots. These were not free. Fortis is a very small artisan boot maker with Sunny and three craftsmen who do everything. So I really didn't feel it right to cage my way toward a free pair of boots that cost him money to make, cost him wages, cost him the purchase of materials. However, as a collab boot, one that I designed, I will get a small kickback for every one that he sells. It's going to work out at less than 7%, like 6.5% or something. It's not going to help me retire, let's just get that straight. I am not involved with Fortis financially in any way. I'm not an investor or a partner in, Sun in Sunny's brand. I, uh, I don't get involved in the ordering, 
the customer service or the delivery, which Fortis handles with you know, more and more experience as they grow. Now, let's quickly go through Fortis Boots' history. Uh, then I'll show you the construction method and materials. And then I'll talk about the price and options. And finally, uh, how to get in touch with them to make your order. Fortis was started by Sunny in 2020. Uh, so it's a very young company. When I asked Sunny how he learned his craft, he told me that the, uh, the Bandung environment was thick with leather craftsmen and bootmakers uh, and leather workers in the Dutch tradition. He learned and then decided to open his own company. Uh, uh, and if you're into boots, particularly American style heritage boots, you'd have to be hidden under a rock these last couple of years not to have noticed the entry into the market of Bandung based Indonesian boot brands in the last few years. Compare the quality and price with similar handmade makers from the US like Roll Club uh, or from Japan, uh, Europe, even China, and there really is no comparison. Pretty much the same quality of construction and attention to detail at 50 to 75% less in price. Of course, Fortis hit some uh, immediate problems when they opened. COVID hit. Lockdowns and the uh, availability of supplies became a thing, uh, as we all know. The international shutdowns meant a lack of tourists going to have a look at the boots. And even as they got orders through their exposure on Instagram, local uh, lockdowns meant that their workers couldn't get to work. And when they could, uh, local leather and other suppliers didn't have a reliable supply chain. That he didn't give up and that he kept his business going and kept his crew together at such a critical start of his business is a testament to his tenacity and to his vision. You know I'm a sucker for the vision of a bootmaker. You can check out Fortis Boots on their Instagram account. Uh, that's fortis.bootsidn. They have a variety of lasts that make very sleek and round toe, plain toe, cap toe service boot models, uh, as well as mock toes, monkey boots, hiking boots and engineer boots. They use a variety of leathers from local tannagers that look you know, pretty good to me for what you pay, uh, as well as imported leathers from uh, tanning, tanning companies like Horween, Badalassi in Italy, Shinki in Japan, amongst a lot of others. Fortis works on an MTO model. They make your boots when you order them, and there are no ready-made boots, at least not for now. The wait list is currently around 10 to 12 weeks, which is primarily down to the queue, first come, first made basis, uh, as well as sometimes delays in getting materials and parts uh, due to a still recovering supply chain, particularly they use internationally sourced materials. However, the actual time to make a boot is around four or five days. They are all handmade. Okay, some people will say if you use a, a stitcher, a sewing machine to stitch the uppers together, it's not handmade. I, I totally disagree. If you saw the computer controlled stitching machines in large boot manufacturers like um, say Timberland, you would know when it's not handmade. Despite using sewing machines, a human head and hand bends over the machine and guides it uh, and controls the stitch and the speed. Um, the bottoming is definitely hand sewn all in their workshop often sitting on the ground with family and kids playing all around. This is an artisan workspace. I'm going to upload a how it's made video straight after this, where the making of these boots is tracked right all the way through. Watch out for it after you watch this video. Okay, so now uh, let's tackle the materials and the construction. The Fortis Bootlosophy Strider boot is constructed using Weltschoen construction a traditional Dutch origin form of construction. It's kind of like stitch down, but with a welt. Stitch down construction turns out the uppers and then stitches the uppers down into the midsole. Take a look at a Clark's Desert boot, for example, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Welt Scorn, on the other hand, also turns out the uppers, but stitches them onto a welt. Then a second stitch goes through the welt into the midsole. If they're being stitched through to the outsole, that second stitch will also go through that as well. Uh, you can see that um, the front part of the boot with the uppers leather turned out and stitched down. The rest of the boot, all the way around the back, is turned in 
and stitch on the inside of the boot through to the welt. Then the outside edge of the welt is stitched into the midsole as well and that's why you see the stitches all the way around the boot. But there are two stitch lines in the front of the boot. That's one stitch for the Veltskuhn stitch down and one stitch for the uh, rapid stitch uh, around the welt. Oh, by the way, the midsole is a tough veg tanned leather. This Veltskuhn construction is meant to be very water resistant because the uppers uh, flow water off the welt and no stitches go through from inside the boot to the outside of the boot. It's even a bit better than stitch down because of the uh, extra barrier of the welt. In this Strider boot, the welt scone and all the sole stitching is hand stitched. I leave you to decide on the neatness uh, and stitching quality that you see here. The outsole, like most upland style hunting boots, is a wedge sole. And like most wedge soles, it's adhered to the midsole rather than sewn. Now, this is quite a safe method of attaching the outsole. Something you see in the construction of uh, uh, red wing wedge soles, other wedge sole boots, and even some studded soles where the rubber composition is too soft to take a stitch well, it might tear. I chose the v Vibram 2021 wedge sole because it's super comfortable, totally supports the arch on any kind of flat or rough terrain, and I think it looks kind of cool. The um, groove bottom provides, I think, a good grip. Now, while I'm on the sole, take a look at the edges. Now, if you've seen the videos of how wedge soles are completed, most handmade uh, uh, boot makers, even those PNW boot makers, most cobblers, will glue the sole on and then sand the edges on a, on a sanding wheel to trim them. These guys shave the edges. They use a sharp knife and you can't even feel them. But I'm telling you, smooth as a baby's bottom. Inside the boot is a veg tanned leather filler that fills the cavity that's caused by the welt. More often than not in other boots, you'll see a cork cavity filler, except in many PNW boots where they use veg tanned leather, just like the Strider. A steel shank is embedded into the leather midsole filler to give arch support and longitudinal stability. On top of that is a veg tan insole uh, to which the welt is attached and on top of that is a comfort leather uh, sock liner insole which has a, a pretty cool uh, a print on it. Moving on upwards, the uppers are stitched around uh, Fortis's proprietary Dakar last. It is a roomy round toe last with a reasonable volume in the toe box and for my feet the heel and waist are reasonably locked in. The uppers are a rough out. That means it's a full grain hide flipped over so that the rough flesh side is on the outside. Rough outs are more capable of withstanding cuts and abrasions moving through uh, rocky terrain because of the fibrous nature of the flesh side. It's not suede. Suede is a split leather. This is full grain leather that's been flipped over. This is going to take the punishment that would leave nicks and scars on smooth grain side out leather and actually tear suede. I chose an Indonesian tanned leather, uh, a local burgundy pull-up. I chose a uh, local leather because I wanted to help them try to keep as much of the company chain as local as possible. Two reasons. We like our boots to be genuine and we talk about helping boot makers keep the supply chain local for the sake of the local economy. So money where the mouth is, not some jingoistic nationalistic chest banging. Second, it keeps uh, boot making as low carbon neutral as possible. Look, it's, it's probably a drop in the carbon ocean, but think global, act local, right? So, the standard Collab Strider boot will be in this burgundy pull-up rough out. But if you want, you can specify another leather, uh, but the cost might be different depending on what that leather is. When uh, Sunny sent me some photos of the boots being made, uh, I actually panicked because it looked pink, <laughs> but that was under the uh, fluorescent lights of his workshop. I'm hoping that you can see in these lights that it's a grape burgundy color, uh, just what I was specking when I saw the sample. Look, this is not a bad leather. It's about two mils thick, so that's about standard for boots. The smooth side of this local pull-up is used uh, regularly by other Bandung bootmakers, 
uh, including in their collabs with uh, American and European brands and retailers. The uppers on this example are lined in the uh, vamp and the heel, but not uh, up, the, up the shaft. Uh, when you order yours, I think they will be fully lined with a very soft lambskin lining even up the shaft. When you take a look at the How It's Made video, you see that they glue the lining uh, to the celastic toe puff uh, and then the celastic to the upper's leather before they last the boot. So yeah, the toe puff is celastic. It's a thermoplastic that gives it shape without being a super tough uh, structure. The heel counter is also celastic covered by an external one-piece pocket uh, and backstay. While the toe structure is fairly soft, the heel counter is firm enough to uh, grip your heels and prevent any movement and heel slip. The backstay incorporates a pull loop made of the same leather, which I think is useful if not essential in a taller boot. The stitching on the uppers, it's really well done in my opinion. It's not perfect. But as the human hand guides the machine, it may never be perfect in any handmade boot. I chose the single contrasting white stitch in this model, uh, amongst the triple stitching in the quarters and the uh, heel backstay. There is a second model, which I'll talk about later, where Sani has made all three stitches in the contrasting white. Um, and when I talk about how to order later, I'll show you some pictures of the Strider 2 model. As I've said, it's an upland style 8 inch shaft, so the hardware comprises five antique brass eyelets, three speed hooks, and then a logger's ninth eyelet at the top. The um, semi gusseted tongue is a local rough out tan leather and it's unlined, it just has the, uh, uh, the grain side on the top. It's gusseted up to the fifth eyelet, uh, which will help with water resistance and also stop tongue slip. I need to show you that um, there is a logo on the outside of the shaft of the boot. It's, it's not easy to see because it's dark on the uh, dark leather. It's a Fortis Boots and Bootlosophy collab logo that's laser embossed into the leather. Pretty cool really how they do it. Now let's talk about sizing and how they fit. Indonesian boot makers use European sizing numbers. So for example, a US 8 is equal to a UK 7, which is equal to an European 41. Now, generally, Bandung bootmakers are true to size and Fortis is no exception. I measure a US 8.5D on the Brannock device. US bootmakers are usually sized a half down from Brannock, so that makes me wear US size 8 in almost all of my boots. But Fortis is true to size and they don't do half sizes. So I would usually order a 41.5, which equates to a US 8.5, which is my Brannock size. But because Fortis goes true to size without half sizes, I wear a Fortis 42. I go a half size up from true. Look, this just gives you an idea of sizing discussions that you'll have with Fortis because when you order, you'll be asked by Sunny to measure your feet and he will tell you what size is best for your feet in his lasts. I'll tell you about how to do that when I talk about ordering. As for fit and comfort, they fit me well in the 42. The toe box, being a roomy round toe, uh, is very roomy and the height of the last means that it uh, fits up to quite high volume feet. The sole construction and the leather in it means that this, is, uh, this felt comfortable straight out of the box under my feet. The sizing and the materials meant that I didn't have any hot spots so I certainly didn't crunch my toes. On my feet, Ah, oh, they are just so comfortable, especially in this uh, Vibram 2021 sole. It's like walking on clouds. Okay, the arch support is nothing like my White's MP or my Nick's uh, Robert boot. I mean, those things have an entire cow's worth of leather built in under the arch. These are not as comfortable as my Alden Indies, despite the um, notorious leather board used by Alden. <laughs> um, but that comes with all of Alden's historic orthopedic shoemaking experience. However, these Strider boots are as comfortable under my arches as any of my Grant Stones or Parkhursts or Red Wings or Wolverines. Uh, they will certainly do me for hiking or standing around all day, I'm pretty sure. So how much are they? Fortis is pricing them at uh, 290 US dollars plus postage. 
at under 300 US dollars, roughly uh, 460 Aussie dollars. I think that's a pretty fair price for a hand made to order boot. I won't make price and value comparisons. Again, I designed these and I may be biased in my views no matter how objective I try to be. So you can look at other handmade MTO boots yourself and make up your own mind on value. There are two models of the Strider. The ones that I've been showing you are the Strider 1 or the main model. Fortis will also make to, uh, make to order the Strider 2 and I will show you some vision of it here as I'm talking. This Strider 2 has the same bones as the Strider 1 but it's a shorter, a, a, a just slightly over 6 inch boot. It has a Dr. Sole wedge sole. It's Goodyear welted with a Norwegian stitch combined with chain stitching and a storm welt. It has all contrast stitching including the box stitch at the corner of the quarters. The hardware uses brighter, shinier, uh, gold-coloured brass hardware in a 5 plus 2 plus 1 configuration. The standard price for both Strider 1 and Strider 2 is US $290 plus postage. If you want a different leather for the uppers, uh, perhaps in a Horween leather or a Badalassi Pueblo, something like that, then when you order, you can discuss that with Sunny and he'll give you a quote for your choice. The way to order is to contact Fortis either by direct messaging to their Instagram account or by using WhatsApp. Uh, as I said earlier, their Instagram handle is fortis.bootsidn. I've put the link in the description below. Their WhatsApp number is plus 6289-7807-4593. That's the plus symbol 6289-7807-4593. And I'm putting that up on screen uh, and I'll also put it down in the description below. So what you do is you contact Fortis and they'll give you a quote and ask for your measurements. My advice is to get someone to help you draw an outline around both your feet while you're standing and wearing your usual socks uh, with your weight evenly on both your feet. Then uh, you take a tape measure and place it along the length of both the drawings and then across the widest part of both the drawings and take pictures when you're doing that. Fortis has some limited ability to modify their lasts uh, if you have strange needs. So ask if you think you need something that's adjusted here and there. They just might be able to do it. When you order, you'll be asked to pay 50% of the cost and 50% of the postage uh, when you order. Fortis now uses PayPal to send an invoice to you. When the boots are ready, you'll be asked to pay the second 50% and then Fortis will send them to you with a tracking number. I believe that by the time you order, they'll be using DHL as their main courier. Uh, just some emphasis, I don't have anything to do with ordering and delivery, so any queries, please go to Fortis. They're the suppliers, not me. If you're contacting them in English, please do expect some difficulty in communication. English is not their first language, so please be patient and be clear and succinct in what you want. Well, there you are. It's my first attempt at a collab, so I'm a little nervous as well as excited. As for Fortis, a lot is at stake because this will expose them to an international audience. Personally, I, I love this Strider design, even if I say so myself. It is pretty unique, it is comfortable, it's handmade to order, and it's an, a crazy affordable price for me. If you're in the market for an MTO handmade boot like this, I hope you consider supporting Fortis. They are a plucky little newcomer small business and I love supporting the small businesses of the world. Don't forget to check out the next video I'm uploading, which is a how it's made video showing uh, them making me this particular pair of boots. Anyway, don't forget to click on the like and the subscribe. Take care and I'll see you soon.